doctors we are studying about the obstruct obstetrics and gynecology so i have some point here from the oxford uh, gynecology book so this is about the obstet obstetrics physical examination so obstetrics physical examination is an examination of a pregnant lady so there is uh, some in uh, some uh, procedure or we can see that uh, there are some uh, methods of examining the pregnant lady it started from the inspection then physical examination then uh, laboratory uh, investigations okay so all these things help us in order to uh, see uh, the uh, condition of the pregnant lady so what we do in obstetrics physical examination so at initial visit a complete physical examination should be undertaken so number first there is the abdominal examination so inspection of your uh, the abdomen sorry inspection of the abdomen of the pregnant lady so note the apparent size of the abdominal distension because uh, the pregnant lady has some uh, product of conception in her womb so the abdomen distant okay so we have to calculate we have to measure or uh, we have to inspect the size of the abdominal distension and number second there is the note any symmetry so we have to know that the abdomen is symmetrical or not or if there's some anomaly into the uterus it may be leads to some asymmetrical conditions and number third point that is the fetal movement fetal movement is a very important sign for the well-being of the fetus so the mother feel the fetus movement is mean that a fetus is in well-being condition and number fourth point that is the cutaneous sign of the pregnancy so there are some uh, normal sign of the skin and then some abnormal sign of the skin so here uh, they mentioned some normal sign of the skin which help us uh, in identifying the identifying the uh, characteristic and the uh, severity or we can say that the uh, level of the uh, pregnancy state okay so cutaneous sign of the pregnancy that is the linear nigra the dark pigmented line stretching from the xiphoid okay sternum through the umbilicus to the suprapubic area of the mother and stria gra de gravidarum so gravidarum mean the state of being pregnant so stria is lining so recent stretches okay marks are purplish in color and stria al became stria became mean old stretches marks are uh, silvery white and what about the umbilicus the umbilicus of the female that is the flattening eversion of the umbilicus due to increase intra abdominal pressure so whenever the intra abdominal pressure increases it's push from inside to outside the umbilicus so and the umbilicus became flat in eversion and what about the superficial vein the superficial vein alternative path of the venous drainage due to the pressure on the inferior vena cava by the gravid uterus so superficial vein so whenever uh, there will be the pregnancy state and uh, there is the product of consumption of the fetus inside the body of the uh, female we can see that whenever during uh, the fetus during the woman the lie she lies okay so the pressure on the inferior vena cava increases so which causes the uh, vena congestion and we can see that superficial veins so sometimes it leads to uh, hypertension of the pregnant lady and number third there is a surgical marks we have to check and we have to take into considerations of some surgical marks surgical scars okay a low uh, pinnan steel incisions uh, may be obscured by pubic hair and laparoscopy scar hidden within the umbilicus so these are the normal sign which help you in inspection of the uh, lady and the second that is the abdominal examination so abdominal examination of the pregnant lady number first point it is symphysis fundal height symphysis fundal height is the way we uh, use uh, to measure the uh, height of the abdomen or height of the uh, uterus it started from the pubic symphysis and it goes till to the zephyr process in the week 36 to 42 weeks so I uh, hear they said that palpate it uh, below 20 week and measure in centimeter more than 20 weeks okay so we use for a tape for the 
measurement of the height from the zip file process to the head of the or the to the tip of the uterus that is the fundus and estimation of the number of fetus okay multiple fetal pole we can feel if there is more than one pregnancy or more than one fetus and the fetal lie the relationship of the longitudinal axis of the fetus to that of the uterus so there are mainly three fetal line positions number first that is the longitudinal if the uh, baby is longitudinal position or same uh, axis is the axis of the mother okay so we can say that fetal head or breech palpable over the pelvic inlet because uh, if the fetus is fetal head is uh, toward that of the uh, cervix okay and this position is called as vertex position and if the caudal part or the base part of the fetus is near to that of the cervical opening or downside okay at that condition we can see that is the breech position of the fetus so in both conditions in the vertex and the breech condition the fetus lie vertically and in the same axis longitudinal axis of the mother so this is for the position of the longitudinal axis or longitudinal lie whatever the oblique Oblique is mean uh, if the position of the baby or we can say if the vertical axis of the baby uh, or the fetus is perpendicular to that of the uh, vertical axis of the mom. So in this condition the head is on right side and the uh, fetal uh, caudal side is on the left side of the mom. So the head or the breech is palpable in the iliac fossa or and nothing felt in the lower uterus so because uh, the fetus is in oblique position uh, so a little bit like uh, obliquely and um, so uh, instead in the head or the caudal part present into the uh, near the opening of the cervix is little bit move right or a little bit move left side so now it reaches to the iliac fossas so either in the left iliac fossa or in the right iliac fossa and so we cannot palpate or we cannot feel anything to the lower region of the uterus if we use by the leopard maneuver so number third that is the transverse position or the transverse line transverse line uh, is i said in the oblique that is not from right to left okay so in this condition that is the transverse condition we can see that the fetal head is on one side of uh, right side of the mom and the fetal caudal part is on the left side of the mom so or this side or uh, the caudal part is on the right side and the head is the left side so it is uh, we can say it's in the transverse position so the vertical axis of the fetus is perpendicular to the vertical axis of the mother <coughs> so the fetus pole felt in the flank and nothing above the brim so what about the presentations Presentation means the part of the fetus or line the pelvic brim or we can say that the part of the fetus which uh, present first from the uh, <coughs> vaginal opening during the vaginal delivery. So that is the presentation. So presentation means the part of the fetus or line the pelvic brim. So whatever the part uh, or line the pelvic brim it come out. So the f so number first that is the cephalic part cephalic mean the head okay if the position of the fetus is cephalic it means that the fetus head is just above the cervix and when uh, during the birth uh, we can see the head part first so head is the presenting part in cephalic presentation so this could be vertex face or bro presentation determined vaginally out of the breech position breech position as i said uh, that is the condition in which the fetal lower area that the caudal area uh, is presenting first and this is uh, near the uh, internal opening of the cervix and whenever we deliver the vaginal delivery okay we can see the lower region of the baby first so this is the breech presentation other there is a compound presentation or others okay in this condition more than one part of the baby can present maybe shoulder sometime shoulder and hand sometime shoulder neck like this okay more than one 
part of the baby can present. What about the amniotic fluid volume? Amniotic fluid volume has a very great importance in palpation and in the development of the uh, baby in the growth of the fetus and it also helps in identifying that of the placental abnormalities okay if the placenta is insufficient then whatever uh, what will happen in that condition uh, there will be less blood flow to the fetus and whenever there will be less blood flow the less nutrient to the grow to the fetus leads to malnutrition or we can say that the uh, developmental defect or growth retardation in the fetus and also less amniotic fluid so it has a direct um, impact on the amniotic fluid and the placental abnormalities so what happened if the plus uh, amniotic fluid is increased if the amniotic fluid is <coughs> more then it is difficult or it will be a little bit difficult uh, to uh, palpate the baby properly so here they said that if the amniotic fluid is increased tense abdomen with the fetal part not easily palpated what about decrease amniotic fluid volume so if decrease in of amniotic fluid volume it compacts the abdomen with the fetal parts easily palpable okay we can easily palpate the fetus and the other point is the auscultation of the fetal heart <coughs> we can uh, hear the fetal heart uh, six weeks after the last menstrual period and we use different methods in identifying the uh, fetal heart rate it's about uh, uh, 110 to uh, 160 it is the range of the fetal heart rate sometime it is accelerated decelerated so they, they are the other characters we will discuss in the another lecture <coughs> so what about here they wrote the fetal heart rate is the best heart at the anterior shoulder of the fetus so when, whenever we need to use the fetal stethoscope in order to identify the fetal heart rate, in order to auscultate the fetal heart rate, so fetal anterior shoulder is the best point where we easily heard the fetal heart rate. And a Doppler ultrasound device, this is the sonic head, okay, from about 12 weeks. So in 12 weeks, we use the Doppler ultrasound device. In the fetal stethoscope, pinard from about 24 week of gestation. So at the week of 24 week of gestation, we use the fetal stethoscope. There is a small stethoscope, okay, then there of the normal one. In a breech presentation, it is often heard at or above the level of maternal umbilicus. Breach, as I said, that it is a condition in which the fetus baby is uh, toward the upper side of the uh, uterus and fetal caudal part below side of the uterus so we can see that or we can say that the cephalic or the cephalic part is near the fundus and the caudal part is near the internal opening of the cervix so in that condition in this condition that is the breech condition is the <coughs> uh, head is above side okay to near them near the fundus so the heart will be the definitely the heart of the fetus is in the thorax so it is above the umbilicus of the mom so maternal umbilicus above the maternal umbilicus or at the level of maternal umbilicus we can hear the fetal heart rate so the rate and rhythm of the fetal heart should be determined over one minute so till one minute we have to check the fetal heart rate the recent ni ce guidelines raises the need for routine fetal heart rate auscultation in the presence of fetal movement but mothers enjoy listening to the fetal heart so we can say that fetal heart is a very important sign which shows the fetal well-being inside the maternal uh, body so these are some point of the obstetrics and gynecology of the pregnancy characteristics okay thank you for that